you. Dear guests, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to uh, Demo Day 3 of the EU Association Lab Incubator Program in which Ukrainian uh, public officials jointly with uh, representatives of uh, civil society uh, create Euro integration services. Three years ago, uh, incubator uh, 1991 uh, will have launched uh, the EU Association Lab. It was uh, not easy three years, uh, which we call now transformation of public officials uh, into real startuppers. We took all our uh, experience with innovation startups and adapted that uh, with uh, teams of public officials. Those were three years of uh, team work. Uh, consisting exclusively of public officials who worked uh, during three uh, uh, programs uh, in design uh, thinking, uh, human-centric approach, uh, which helped uh, those teams uh, who joined the program with ideas, uh, with help of ideas, trainers and mentors to formulate proper programs. And this fantastic transformation uh, was possible thanks to the team of trainers. Today you will see five new startups, new uh, steps uh, for implementation of the EU association between Ukraine and the EU, because uh, this document is the main uh, orientation for our activities. and. Uh, EU Association Lab Coordinator, uh, uh, advisor on digital uh, transformation, will guide. And also, 1991, Viktor Gursky would be the co-host. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, welcome all those who are online. Welcome you all. Uh, uh, usually, uh, jointly with the teams, uh, with uh, guests, uh, we were in big, uh, comfortable hall. But current circumstances uh, brought some um, uh, changes to our not only private life but also to the format of our program. We are very thankful to our uh, programs, trainers, mentors, uh, that they uh, found efforts, time, and uh, motivation and wish uh, to adapt to new conditions and go through all the challenges uh, of uh, this year's uh, incubation uh, program to online. And this final uh, three-year EU Association Lab program, uh, uh, you know, well, the decision was uh, made to uh, have some limited number of offline so that we could have this uh, uh, good atmosphere of the demo day. And today you will have the unique opportunity to see the results of the work of our five teams in the incubator. Uh, uh, you will have an opportunity to meet them closer and ask questions uh, uh, during virtual uh, presentation uh, by our teams and also to share their joy uh, during the uh, uh, award ceremony. Our uh, uh, participants, you know, got adapted to new conditions, uh, uh, new conditions, and uh, of course, uh, 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 this uh, mood would be very festive one. Uh, um, I should remember all the partners, uh, thanks to whom all those events occurred. A EU Association Lab uh, existing over three years, uh, and all these people and uh, uh, organizations, they were uh, all proactive uh, to our proposals, uh, and uh, they uh, welcomed them, uh, our. Uh. Now I give the floor to uh, Vice Premier Olga Stefanishin. Dear partners, Dear participants of the program and guests, I'm truly glad to welcome you at the final event of the EU Association Lab, notifying the completion of a three-year-long program for development of innovation programs for pro projects for EU-Ukraine Association agreement implementation. 
The government's Office for Coordination of European and Euro-Atlantic Integration, together with its partner from the GSZ, the Consulting Fund to support the EU-Ukraine Association, back in 2018, commenced this first incubation program for civil servants in line with the best practices and the startup, the startup culture examples. It was really an innovative and revolutionary decision of its time owing to EU Association Lab uh, input, the civil servants really were able to create new conditions for qualitatively new bureaucracy. They have been better able to implement new approaches in the area of public services and government services. Now we see real projects with real products uh, able to change forever the ministries and executive institutions in favor of euro integration policy and now we see that the level of implementation has changed drastically the eu ukraine association agreement truly can become an efficient tool to change lives of people for the better and the governmental office for European and Euro-Atlantic integration uh, has been monitoring the progress of uh, EU lab participants, looking how they implement their ideas. We saw how political leaders of respective institutions have been involved, how the uh, progress, pro products developed by projects have been implemented in relevant institutions. A uh, special welcome goes to the teams from round three of the project. Thank you for, together with you, we've been able to overcome the challenges of today to create virtual instrument, to improve uh, our training capacity, to improve our digitalization agenda, and to make our civil and public service better for the benefit of every one of us. I can't wait to see presentations of your products. I will follow you online, and I do hope that uh, we will be able to make this key message known to other stakeholders, for them to further support your ideas, your products, your services, to use your services and methods further on. My key message to all of you is that we should work together to make public services truly open, transparent and accessible for every citizen. Uh, separate things go to our international partners for their keen involvement, their commitment, their attraction of uh, expert capacities to make this project happen in the scope of EU Association Lab. This includes the Consulting Fund to support EU uh, Ukraine Association set up with support from the German government. Uh, the, the implementing partner that we've uh, been working with uh, throughout this uh, program, which is uh, Open Data Incubator 1991. Uh, we've been able to witness really interesting IT decision, able to change and shift uh, perceptions of the many and have a fresher look of the everyday challenges of public service and public policy. I'd like to thank uh, the great lot of participants who have joined this work throughout the years and uh, spared their time and efforts to work together to create really viable teams. This is of great importance because European integration is always about teamwork. European integration is always about the work that every one of us has to do because it ultimately depends on everyone. I do wish every success to all the team members. I am pretty much confident that you will be able to really incentivize with your own example many more people, your colleagues, and I hope that you will be able to fully implement your innovative and creative approach in your everyday work, in future projects to further reforms in our country with wishes of fruitful work and with hopes that we will see a very nice uh, competition in the end. Thank you. 
our next guest is the head of mission of German Embassy in Ukraine, Anna Feldgusen. Dear colleagues, dear partners, dear program participants, it's a great honor for me to welcome you at the occasion of the final event of the three-year incubation program called EU Association Lab. In 2018, together with our partners, we have started our EU Association Lab to foster implementation of the association agreement. It has become the first program to work, uh, to look uh, on the development of innovative culture in public service. In three years since the beginning of its implementation, about 150 public servants have upgraded their skills in design thinking, project management, communication, and other fields. And together with civic society representatives, together with representatives of business circles, they were able to create 16 prototypes designed to contribute to the implementation of the EU-Ukraine Association Agreement. And I'd like to, to welcome and congratulate all the five new teams, as well as lab alumni, for the efforts to develop those very interesting, very promising solutions. I'm really much impressed uh, to see that even in these uh, challenging times, uh, you've been able to participate in our virtual laboratory online uh, to elaborate your uh, inspiring ideas. I know that you've been working quite hard to shift your initial ideas in, uh, of public services into some working prototypes, and these prototypes have now been tested, improved, and uh, further refined now to become fully operational, fully-fledged services. And you're really pioneers and trailblazers of digitalization of public services. We can't wait really to see your presentation and to know more of the results uh, achieved by you in the areas of environmental impact assessments, environment friendly uh, um, aviation infrastructure development, vocational education and training, transport, uh, transport safety, and sports and recreation services. I'd like to thank uh, all the 16 teams that have been participating in the lab operations for three years for uh, your courage to take part in this very first Ukraine-wide incubation program for civil servants. I'd like to thank the Governmental Office of European and Euro-Atlantic Integration for your strong belief in the success of this lab program. I'd like to congratulate the 1991 Open Data Incubator, all the mentors for making this happen, for sharing their experience. So what is left for me now is to wish you every success in presenting your ideas today. And I'm quite sure that your ideas will uh, lead to a qualitatively new level of public services, of innovation, and it will foster the political will that we will always need. Thank you and good luck. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, the government of Germany, for your ongoing support of this vital project of importance for Ukraine. Uh, and the next welcoming speech will be delivered by the Head of Delegation of the European Union to Ukraine, Mati Masikas. For organizing this event. My pleasure to be with you today and to congratulate this year's five EU Association Lab champions. As dynamic and reform-oriented professionals, you are vital to Ukraine's pursuit of its European reform path. You are also in important contributors to fostering innovative culture among Ukraine's public service. In Ukraine, the EU and its member states are committed to support the implementation of the association agreement. 
the present advisory fund for EU association for Ukraine, funded by Germany, is a highly valuable example of this. The EU itself is also deeply engaged in supporting public administration reform and the digitalization of public services. Our assistance package just for this purpose amounts to over 160 million euro since 2014. Furthermore, in the context of the COVID pandemic, I'd like to mention our Team Europe Emergency Assistance Package of 190 million euro and the 1.2 billion euro emergency macrofinancial assistance. The EU moved quickly to help Ukraine face the pandemic. The continued implementation of the EU-Ukraine Association Agreement will help to strengthen Ukrainian institutions, the economy and the resilience of its society. Without people, nothing is possible. And without strong institutions, nothing is lasting. We want to see sustainable reforms. And for this, a reformed and accountable public administration is vital for our cooperation and for Ukraine's citizens. I am pleased to see that this approach is exactly reflected in the EU Association Lab project. The five winning topics for this year's round reflect well the priorities of EU-Ukraine cooperation. These include, in particular, the green and digital focus, which the EU promotes globally. With great pleasure, we will therefore assist in today's demo day, and I am curious to see all the five innovative solutions. I wish you all success with further implementation of your initiatives. Thank you. Дякую, пане Майстікас, дякую Європейському Союзу, представництво ЄС в Україні. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, the EU delegation to Ukraine. I'd like to thank the Government Office of European and Euro-Atlantic Integration, the Federal Government of Germany, and all other international local stakeholders. So, uh, I would like to give the floor now to the program manager of Incubator 1991, Oksana Mirosnichenko. Thank you, Victor. Please welcome our partners and colleagues who will be evaluating our teams today. So, our jury includes Anatoly Kutsevo, uh, Anatoly Kutsevo, Deputy State Secretary of the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine. Oleksiy Gusko, Coordinator of the Expert Group Government Office for the Coordination of European Euro Atlantic Integration. Maria Golo, Political Section of the EU Delegation of Ukraine. Uh, Bernadette Noy, GSA Country Director in Ukraine. Anne Bersio, Senior Advisor for EU Ukraine Association, GSZ Ukraine. Viktor Gurski, Executive Director of Social Boosting, co founder of 1991 Open Data Incubator, and Karina Schulz, Project Manager of the EU Advisory Fund, GSZ. Thank you. And let me introduce you to another person of great importance for the EU Association Lab, because without her, we might be able to have this three years of work. She was mentoring the team. She was inspiring the team. She was carrying them to the success. Please welcome Evgenia Klepa, coordinator of the EU Association Lab from the 1991 Open Data Incubator. Zhenya, are you with us? Okay, thank you. Glad to see and hear all of you. It's still rather unusual for me to speak like that from the comfort of one's home, but without being able to be there. I'd like to welcome all the five uh, finalist team. I'd like to thank all the partners. And yes, Tatiana, you were right when you said how we supported the lower participants to bring the ideas from initial concept to fruition. I'd like to wish all the successful to our teams. And I think everyone 
even if not physically present, is fully supporting the respective team. Let us wait for the finals. Let us see who will win it. So I will be following it online. Thank you. Super, Zhenya. Glad to hear you. Hope that everyone was able to hear you as well. Uh, I'd like to brief you on the rule, rules of pitching. Uh, every team will have three minutes for the pitch. And this will be closely monitored. You will have your mic switched off after three minutes. Then the jury will have five minutes to put questions and hear answers. Maybe one or two questions will squ squeeze into that time slot. So just be attentive. Yeah, Oksana. Okay, I can't wait to see the most innovative projects designed by Ukrainian civil servants. Hopefully you too. Our teams been, have been working for a year to improve and refine their projects with every lecture, every mentoring session, every workshop, they've become better. And now they are ready to present their projects to you. Dear jury members, dear viewers, dear colleagues, without further ado, we can start with our pitches. And the first project will be from the Ukrainian Civil Aviation Service. Uh, please welcome the Fly Green platform. Hi, welcome from the Aviation Service of Ukraine and our Fly Green pla uh, project. It all started with an idea of making our aviation infrastructure more eco-friendly. And the question was how we can assist Ukrainian airports to become real green, uh, greener. We had a long way from the initial idea to the MVP. We learn new skills, we shifted our perceptions of mundane things, and now this idea has flown. We went all the way from basic conceptions of what green airports are to some specific recommendations for Ukrainian airports to make them speak the only and unique green language. Hi, we have been the voices of our presentation from the Fly Green program. This bulb represents the average level of knowledge about green airports. It is not enough to just know about problems and challenges. We are confident that Ukrainian aviation can do better. And more than that, in 21st century, lifelong learning is one of prerequisites. This is a must, it can be even in a remote way. And even complex things can be taught easily, drawing interest for, from the participants. That was in the focus of our attention when we came up with our training course aimed at both greenhorns and already seasoned professionals. Thanks to the EU association like pro program, we were able to learn from EU member states experience and to share our uh, results with Ukrainian colleagues. We had best practices, we had case studies, we had knowledge check modules. This is all just the first step in our training program for Ukrainian aviation professionals, which will help uh, optimize costs, reduce environmental impact, and improve the quality of Ukrainian aviation infrastructures. Now we have the concept of this training course. We have scenarios designed for every training model. We made some video materials, both on site and in studio settings, and we have some early videos to share with you. The level of impact that airports have on environment has reached critical margin. Electricity bills, uh, greenhouse emissions, 
going through the growth, going through the roof, spoiling the soil and degrading life. It's time to make airports greener and friendlier. This is the challenge that the aviation industry has to face. From knowledge to actions, our further cross point will be about setting up a platform for exchange of experience, followed by a conference, annual conference in 2021. It will provide possibility for Ukrainian airports to use common language of green technologies to be more confident in looking into the future. Thank you, and we are ready to take your questions. I think we have a question from Anatoly Kutsevol. We will try to hear you, Anatoly. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you for your presentation. Quite an interesting one. Uh, just a brief question. Uh, when describing your project, you mentioned your intention to give more information about why airports need to turn green. It is, is it just about airports or is it also about, say, waste management on, on board of airplanes in terms of more responsible treatment on behalf of passengers? Uh, Thank you for your question. Actually, it, it is about every bit of it, including the point you've mentioned. We want to increase knowledge of all the stakeholders and airports are just like, you know, uh, a city inside a city and on top of aviation authorities, they also have handling companies and many other stakeholders working there. So it's about invi inviting all of them to develop a common understanding of a greener input uh, and not being afraid to move further with it. More questions, please. At least one question we can field. Uh, with no questions from our esteemed jury members. I'd like to, to show the whole of the project team, let them ask to, to let, let us ask the whole team to join together to show everyone who has been involved in the development of that nice project. Please welcome the project team, all of them. So good to have you with us. Um, thank you again. And another project is Money Follows the Service, about very important project, please welcome Matvi Bidni from the Ministry for Youth and Sports of Ukraine. Uh, hi, I represent the project called Money Follow the Service. Our involvement in the program allowed us designing a plan for the development of our idea and an MVP to pilot the project. The aim is to make our uh, sports and recreation available for everyone, accessible. Hi, I'm Matvi. I will tell you about our project based on electronic platform to administer budget uh, funds earmarked for sports and recreation. The key problem we had in mind concerned low level of public involvement in sports and recreational activities leading to higher levels of uh, cardiopulmonary, cardiovascular and other non-infectious diseases. The key reason for that is an obsolete system of 
of funding the sports and recreation activities. We need to get away from funding just the upkeep of sports institutions towards more modern, competitive, service-based approaches. The core of the project is about a marketplace and electronic platform with the government becoming a con the contracting authority and the service users being uh, citizens. And everyone willing to join this platform will automatically register with the platform to become uh, the service consumer and they will receive specific scores for based on the activity of uh, the involvement, based on how often they use individual service. There will be face recognition based options to better track uh, one's involvement. So every service properly consumed will have certain scores sent from the consumer to the service provider. Uh, we decided that we will go step by step with our platform impl implementation. We decided we would start with the pilot and for six months of cooperating with the U.S. Association Lab, we managed to do a lot because the strategy of physical fitness and physical culture and sports development until 2028 was approved by the cabinet and the idea of the project uh, was included in it. We streamlined operations of sports club, we created a, uh, an a, occupational standard for that, and we used the possibilities of our cooperation with JESA to create an MVP. We've already tried it on several, uh, with several uh, suppliers like volleyball club and uh, karate club from Mikolaev. To further the project, we need uh, funds to further refine the MVP. And we see several options to improve the functionality of the final product. I think this is exactly the right time to have this platform up and going because there is public demand for it and we have some regulatory framework already in place. We are in the process of finalizing the registration of our MVP. We have the team willing to finalize it. So my only question to you, are you ready to join the healthy lifestyle related project? Join. I think there will be many more those willing to, to join because the topic is really of relevance. Dear jury members, do you have any questions? Yes, Mrs. Nye. Welcome. Thank you a lot for the presentation and I was interested in um, how far advanced is the pilot in the city of Mariupol and how are the experiences there? Uh, uh, now it's the stage of uh, just testing uh, ability to checking uh, the uh, testing, checking the effect of the given the service, uh, checking the service of the face recognition. And the, first of all, we should to understand the, the service uh, work correctly, and we can to uh, we can to understand that this data which we uh, have uh, from the in the process of this checking is correct, and we can to uh, we can to use it in our work to analyze and to understand it's everything okay. It's just first stage and. Uh, uh, the next uh, week, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we should start the next stage. It will uh, the uh, f feedback from the from the service. It will the it will the um, give a feedback about this uh, service. So we 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 moving forward. Thank you. 
Дякую, пане Матвій. Сподіваюся, що наші... Дякую, Матвій. Сподіваюся, що наші журі слухали вас. And uh, also you heard translation to Ukrainian. Uh, Victor, uh, do you have the uh, wish to ask your question? Please. Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Uh, uh, my question uh, is uh, twofold. As far as I understand, uh, uh, anyone can join this service uh, after finishing this uh, project. But uh, when the uh, st state launches this kind of service, there are certain uh, training opportunities. Uh, uh, so the state also assumes uh, the responsibility for quality of uh, those trainings provided how uh, the uh, uh, accreditation process for the participants will be arranged by the state. Uh, thank you for your question. You know, if I uh, understood you correctly, uh, you, uh, the point is about verification of the subjects who are providing services and how we are going to select uh, uh, or s segregate uh, the uh, good quality from the poor quality. Uh, you know, this is a good question, actually. Uh, we were drafting the uh, uh, laws on uh, uh, and uh, develop KPIs. Uh, 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 these kind of uh, issues are regulated within the Ministry of Sports. Uh, uh, there are uh, some uh, quality standards uh, available, and I think that uh, those uh, budget entities uh, could also participate in implementation of this state order. Uh, the question is uh, how to attract uh, entities uh, which are not uh, uh, regulated by us. Uh, and uh, with this state standard, we are uh, going to formulate uh, requirements for kinds of entities. And during qualification, uh, we will track uh, adherence to uh, those standards. And we will create the register of uh, service providers who uh, would like to participate in this project and uh, comply with the high level conditions uh, related to health protection of the users, uh, you know, their elementary uh, rights for sports service. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dear jury members, thank you, Matvi. This complex product uh, is being developed uh, uh, not uh, by the uh, himself, uh, but uh, with his comprehensive team. You know, the uh, team members are online. You know, let's ask them a question. You know, how do you feel about that? Uh, unfortunately, I cannot see you, but uh, I do understand that everything is okay. So, coming to another team. Uh, a, a great number of traffic accidents is a big uh, problem in Ukraine, which needs a complex approach. The Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine continues uh, working on this uh, uh, in this area, and now they will present us, uh, you know, the online certificate for the transporters. So for the pitch, uh, Sergei Alexandrov is invited. Good day. Our project is an online service for 15 uh, uh, staff members uh, in transportation who go through uh, certification and uh, knowledge and experience uh, check. So the Ministry of Infrastructure, the NGOs, uh, um, uh, specialists in IT sphere, during the incubation uh, period, we uh, created the human-oriented state service, which improve, will improve the traffic uh, and lower the corruption. Good day. In order to raise uh, say, uh, transportation safety, uh, we launched the training uh, uh, and the knowledge check. 
Uh, but this system is not uh, uh, perfect, you know, th there is some corruption and uh, uh, non-objective uh, testing or assessment uh, uh, during quar uh, quarantine uh, limitations during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, uh, poor qualification uh, of the manager, you know, leads uh, lead to uh, uh, traffic accidents, uh, you know, and uh, more than 3,000 uh, people die in traffic accidents. Therefore, our team uh, started uh, uh, challenging uh, uh, those problems. And within our uh, program, we made the online testing of the uh, stuff in transportation through um, uh, using conventional testing systems and MS teams. The results obtained uh, have shown that online certification allows us to uh, eliminate uh, corruption risks through uh, uh, absence of uh, access uh, between uh, uh, ex uh, uh, the tester uh, and the and the student, and also to, to do some distant uh, control of the uh, testing facility, and to save funds uh, uh, through elimination of uh, business trips uh, for testing purposes uh, by 600 grunas per one employee which would result in uh, saving of 9 million hryvnas annually. But the uh, existing uh, uh, certification system uh, requires some protection from cheating and hacking. Uh, to do that, you know, we got some uh, money from GIZ to develop the uh, certification device, uh, you know, which is uh, already developed and, you know, filled with contact after the contact was developed and bring, uh, launching it into uh, legislation, you know, we will uh, try to commission it until 2021. Any uh, transportation uh, manager has access to the educational uh, programs and the testing. Uh, in case of positive passing, uh, he could go uh, through online testing with relevant certificates sent by, e uh, by mail. Uh, online service users uh, would uh, uh, be uh, managers in transportation, you know, physical people in transportation, and any other person. Our team consists of uh, experienced uh, professionals in infrastructure, um, knowledge check, uh, and IT specialists having experience in uh, managing such kind of uh, systems. Uh, by launching this service, we will reduce the corruption risk, uh, increase safety on the transportation, and bring Ukraine to uh, implementation uh, of uh, association agreement. And we'll uh, make testing uh, and just not uh, for that. Please, your questions. Dear jury members, do you have uh, questions? We have five minutes for questions. We would be glad to get your comments or questions. And Bercio. Uh, good day for a very good presentation. Uh, your product could be useful, uh, but I have a couple of questions. Um, uh, could you elaborate a little bit on the scope? Um, is your product aiming at exclusively Ukrainian companies, U Ukrainian drivers, uh, and uh, also driving in Ukraine? But are also are you also aiming at including international companies uh, with international drivers driving in? in Ukraine. So how is the scope? Could you elaborate a little bit on this? And also a second a question I have with regard to the to the final product. As I understood, it's going to be well online platform, but uh, basically a vocational training product. And here uh, my question would be, are you planning uh, to uh, involve your program in the 
in the 2019 government adopted reform uh, concept for vocational training until 27 um, is the national agency for qualification involved how are you interlinking your product with the overall scope of vocational education thank you Thank you for your question. The first part of your question. Uh, international companies uh, 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 currently cannot participate uh, in this uh, platform because they go, should go through accreditation and they should be registered uh, in Ukraine and be Ukrainian resident, uh, only in this case. What concerns uh, including uh, our resource into vocational uh, training program? We have drafted the uh, law which introduces changes to uh, increasing uh, qualification of drivers and managers uh, in transportation. And after that, probably it will uh, be linked to educational programs, but currently this is uh, an additional training uh, to upgrade qualification le level arranged and implemented uh, through the Ministry of Infrastructure uh, by uh, companies or entities which were accredited by us. Uh, there is another question. Is there any question from anybody? I don't see any raised hands. No questions. Then uh, thank you, the jury members. Uh, and we would like to invite the team, which consists of uh, Kharkiv uh, and Kyiv uh, members. Uh, well, uh, they were, but now they disappeared from online. Uh, and we are very thankful to them uh, to have joined. <laughs> uh, the following team uh, wants to reduce the negative impact of production, which is very important, but sometimes ruining for the uh, environment. Uh, the Environmental Protection Ministry uh, presents the service to uh, um, environmental impact assessment. Svetlana Bersona and Yulia Hrudba will present. Within uh, uh, this project, we were developing the uh, uh, e-service, uh, which would uh, uh, assess uh, environmental impact uh, uh, according to clear indication. It will uh, allow for uh, EII uh, more uh, accessible for, for both uh, the public, the businesses, and the uh, Ministry of Environmental Protection, uh, Transportation University uh, Institutes, um, the State um, uh, Environmental Academy, Federation of Metallurgy are the members uh, who participated in the environmental impact assessment. Uh, we created this service which would allow a uh, long term uh, procedure to make shorter, more comfortable, and accessible to all. And we managed that. Uh, so we developed the uh, database of standards, prototype of e-service. Uh, we are a powerful team and uh, we are moving ahead. Uh, welcome, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Yulia, and I present uh, an environmental impact team. And the project that we developed you know, in the incubator program uh, in order to implement a uh, EU association agreement, you know, we uh, develop the uh, uh, environmental IPA assessment, uh, and the Ministry of uh, Environmental Protection is the recipient of that. Uh, this project uh, is implemented in order to assess uh, the uh, impact on the environment uh, during reconstruction of building of any uh, site uh, uh, or object. It could be a road, uh, you know, fueling stations, a shop, any uh, uh, object. Uh, but 
the main thing is uh, to assess how it affects the environment. Uh, uh, the main uh, uh, stakeholders are the entities, which uh, entity which is planning to do the planned activities. Uh, then the uh, uh, environmental ICPAT assessment organizations and the public which participates in the hearings. Uh, uh, all these uh, were, uh, were developed, you know, according to criteria and formulated uh, KPIs. Uh, those uh, KPIs allow uh, objective uh, assessment uh, of the impact on the environment in order to uh, uh, quickly calculate those indicators. We offered the e-service, uh, which allows uh, quick uh, and objective uh, calculation of the environment and impact assessment. Uh, so uh, the user uh, creates the user profile in which uh, he outlines uh, the impact on the environment. After checking uh, all the, his planned activities, uh, the uh, KPIs are calculated automatically from the database. Uh, at the end of this, you know, the aggregated um, total is provided uh, uh, telling uh, how uh, each type of activity affects the environment. We continue uh, our work on the project thanks to uh, uh, through calculation and uh, broadening the functionality of the services, uh, training of stakeholders, developing of uh, uh, video commercials. Now we are searching for the partners uh, in order to attract technical support, improve uh, functionality and content of the e-service. Uh, jointly, we will uh, uh, save the environment for the future generations. Uh, I would like to thank you uh, to, and GIZ, uh, Office of Reform, and uh, 1991 Open Data, uh, uh, and all uh, te uh, team members of the project. So, uh, ready to answer your questions. Thank you, Julia. Dear jury members, please ask your questions. I see uh, Maria Golub has a question. You can ask in Ukrainian so that our colleagues would understand it. Currently, we cannot hear you. It was a big pleasure for me to track. Uh, I was the uh, uh, team member to advocate. advocate. Uh, thank you for doing that. So the. The question is about KPIs. Uh, uh, how to uh, ensure uh, independence of those KPIs? How those KPIs would be developed? And whether they could ensure, ensure or guarantee Uh, you know, that's a break in communication. I could not hear what she says. Thank you for your question. We continue uh, our work on the project. Uh, uh, first of all, our e-service is on the website of the Minister of Environmental Protection. Second, we continue um, the training of the stakeholders uh, participating in the process. And uh, uh, we have uh, our standards developed, uh, which uh, are now registered and approved by the ministry. Did I answer your question? Because uh, there was a break in communication. Maria, Maria was content. Another question from uh, uh, Mrs. Noy. Please ask. Uh, well, a project is handed in, and the evaluation, your evaluation or your assessment is negative. What will be the consequences? And what uh, mandate and power do you have uh, to, 
yeah, stop or to uh, ask for changes and things like that. Thank you. Tak, ja może dopomogę. Thank you for your question. Our e-service uh, just uh, uh, helps uh, the, uh, make uh, the quality uh, assessment. So we help uh, the qualitative uh, assessment, you know, to make them more uh, quality-wise better. Uh, but we cannot stop uh, activities uh, of the entity or permit uh, its activity. This service uh, uh, um, uh, is aimed at the objective environmental impact assessment for all the stakeholders, uh, uh, business, uh, NGOs, um, the ministry. Uh, they have the same type uh, uh, qualitative assessment calculated. Did I answer your question? Somebody else wants to ask a question. And the final question from Anna Bercio. Yes, thank you. Uh, My question would be linked to the question just asked. So you just uh, explained that you have um, the state uh, platform of the of the reports on the ministry's website. So what happens if we have a dissent between the evaluation of uh, taken in this uh, system and now the new platform, which includes assessments of, of civil society of other stakeholders. So here, uh, how it is interlinked. This would be interesting. And also you mentioned that you are looking now for additional stakeholders in the process. Um, wouldn't it be interesting to involve maybe actors of, of market surveillance, uh, for example, to, to be included here in this process? Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, this environmental impact assessment uh, attracts uh, all these three main stakeholders. Uh, uh, all of them uh, simultaneously will be uh, linked, uh, uh, the public, the NGOs and the, the ministry. It is set uh, in the law. It is already there. But if uh, um, other stakeholders are to be attracted, you know, for example, to analyze the market uh, or uh, other, yes, of course, you know, this service will allow them to do so. Did I answer a question? Uh, thank you, Mrs. Yulia. That was a powerful team with a great number of representatives from various entities. So many of them are online. Uh, let's see how the team supports uh, Mrs. Yulia. Uh, everyone supports. Uh, thank you very much. And now coming to another pitch. Mm. And our final team for today uh, decided to improve the sector, which should have been improved long ago, uh, and the, which requires, uh, uh, this is the uh, profi skills, you know, vocational training, which would allow uh, many uh, young Ukrainians uh, to get uh, quality modern education with uh, um, professional skills. Irina Shulik and uh, Prof, uh, prof skills team. Oh, welcome. We are uh, team developments uh, from the Ministry of Education and Science. Uh, our team consists of the best uh, uh, teachers uh, in vocational training. And uh, today uh, we are offering the online course for electricians. Uh, and uh, now we are uh, doing the dual education in vocational training. And we started from training of trainers, of teachers. Uh, September, the uh, dual education training.
training was offered for teachers in vocational education. And now we are trying to implement the digital technologies for our students and uh, pupils. Uh, um, uh, we hope that our course would allow to transforming their talents into the real profession. Welcome. Uh, Ministry of Education and Science welcomes you, and we offer the distant learning course for electricians. Why this? Uh, COVID-19 uh, um, has generated new challenges and requirements for arranging the uh, educational process and training. Over the recent three to five years, uh, various online courses were implemented, but it was in the higher education and uh, uh, secondary education. But now uh, the vocational uh, education turn uh, uh, emerged. Uh, in March uh, 2020, uh, the education process uh, tra in vocational training looked like that. But uh, you can see that that was what not, was not satisfactory. Uh, and uh, we first uh, offered various platforms, various courses, and uh, uh, bit by bit we came to uh, the um, conclusion uh, that we are to develop a new environment uh, for distant and mixed uh, uh, learning in vocational training. Such uh, environment could include uh, virtual classes, uh, uh, virtual courses, uh, conference calls, uh, feedback uh, between teachers and uh, students. Mm, uh, more than 400 uh, professions uh, which are learned uh, in Ukraine in vocational institutions, uh, more than 200,000 um, seekers. Uh, so we decided to develop a pilot project uh, in, uh, with electricians. This is the uh, profession number seven in vocational training. So uh, there will be uh, students, um, teachers, and also adults who want to get new professional skills and competences. Uh, what was done as of today? First of all, uh, over the recent two years, we upgraded the material and technical base. Uh, each uh, uh, institution has uh, practical centers. Second, we have the online course in which we uh, teach uh, the teachers and uh, uh, masters uh, how to do the dual education and mixed education. But we still require some expert and technical support in formulation and development such courses. Therefore, uh, over this period, uh, we have developed uh, the structure of the uh, course and modules and proposals how to assess how uh, assess the uh, education seekers, how uh, the future course will look like. Uh, uh, those uh, will be the uh, modern uh, online lessons uh, that, that would be e-library and uh, remote testing. We've got the testing plan. Uh, uh, in December, we will uh, um, uh, download all the materials, and uh, then in, uh, in January uh, we will be able to launch uh, potential potential uh, seek for potential donors uh, to fund that. Uh, those will be uh, methodological people, professors uh, in the ministries, and we are uh, waiting for your support. Thank you, dear jury members. Do you have any questions? Mrs. Noy, Mrs. Noy. Uh, 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 thanks a lot for the presentation, very interesting. Uh, for me, two main issues. How do you guarantee that the selection of the courses and modules you are offering is market orientated? And the second, how is private sector or private industry involved in the development of the, strate or the strategic outline of uh, your TVET models and uh, programs? Uh, thank you for your question. EU for Skills uh, program uh, two years ago, we started already uh, working with the uh, professional unions. Currently, the standards uh, of professional uh, education are coordinated with the employers. And uh, whenever the courses are developed, we attract the business partners uh, directly, companies. Uh, uh, 
they help us uh, in drafting or developing those uh, and then further they will employ those new employees uh, therefore uh, learning for the needs and skills analysis uh, are very important in the drafting and developing uh, such kind of courses besides uh, members of the directorate uh, you know have gone through training international labor organization you know in all, uh, through digital courses and we hope that the skills obtained uh, knowledge obtained uh, would allow us uh, to prepare the quality product thank you do you have some more questions uh, mrs. Noy uh, liked uh, the, the response do you have more questions and Bersio, please Uh, we could not hear you. Uh, Alexei, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, good day. Uh, thank you for a good presentation and good idea. Uh, uh, I think uh, this is a challenge as of today. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, my question uh, uh, would be going through subjective perception of reality. Why, uh, therefore, I will start uh, from critics. You know, I, I missed a component of popularization of vocational training in your presentation. Uh, well, yes, according to statistical data, only 20% of graduates uh, uh, take uh, uh, vocational uh, training after graduation from school. Therefore, we improved uh, uh, the communication component. Uh, if uh, you like, you can uh, link to Telegram channel uh, of the Ministry of Education, and we list the number of professions uh, in which we train. Mm, uh, in vocational uh, institutions, uh, so some 18 posts uh, have been launched uh, in our Telegram channel. Uh, we are speaking about cooks, about sailors, about uh, uh, you know the uh, the the, the uh, goals are very ambitious, but they require some resources, you know. And uh, the next step would be in improving communication. Thank you, and Bersha, please. <coughs> Uh, thank you. Very interesting and useful product you developed. Um, I would like to know, as I understand, it's a hybrid product, yes? Not only online, but also, okay. So, um, do you plan to include the Ministry of Economic Development and Trade and Agriculture? And also, in this very specific field, do you plan to include uh, conformity assessment bodies? Since this electrical equipment is uh, well, it's it's a priority area for further uh, potential um, access to uh, EU internal market and uh, cooperation here in this field. I believe, yeah, that you could uh, very well involve the those who whose uh, daily bread it is to cooperate in this sphere, and also I believe that here electrical equipment in Ukraine we have economic operators who are very very well advanced and skilled already and whether this isn't also a good opportunity for public private cooperation thank you uh, yes, uh, we started uh, upgrading infrastructure in vocational uh, institutions, but unfortunately up to 60% of the uh, material is obsolete, uh, it requires upgrade. Uh, and um, uh, employers are to be integrated and capacities of uh, companies in order to train and teach uh, skills uh, uh, used uh, or required in uh, production. Uh, and our course will be or uh, would offer the uh, block for self-assessment uh, based on the results of uh, course learned but the assessment process will, will go through the qualification centers uh, uh, 
uh, the system of which is being developed uh, both uh, by both the Ministry of Economic Development and certification centers. Thank you. Uh, 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 another question, Mrs. Noy. I have the question from Mrs. The traditional lattes, for instance, have now become absolutely obsolete. So, how do you or how does Ukraine cope uh, in a lot of profession with this technology change where equipment is getting rather expensive? And, uh, well, getting a little bit also in the direction what Anne was asking, what is the role of private sector in this to become really a, a modern a modern system for TVET and not instructing with old technologies? Thank you, Mrs. Noy. Uh, you know, it is very uh, um, uh, uneasy to catch up with the fast development technologies. Um, that would be different uh, work direction in the ministry. This is uh, in uh, introducing of dual education, uh, providing uh, uh, the students with opportunity to get skills and uh, knowledge directly uh, at companies uh, using this form of uh, tuition. 70% of um, the skills are gained uh, at companies. Uh, this year, uh, we approved the uh, regulation which establishes uh, rules of for such kind of uh, training, and uh, we hope uh, it's it's not yet widely used. Uh, but this is a good platform for further cooperation and uh, building uh, private and public partnership in the in the area. Thank you. I also have some raised hands. Are those questions or do you still have more questions? Then we do not have any questions. Thank you very much. And also we have the team which just joined and we would like to welcome uh, it uh, with the demo day. Please bring them to screen. Uh, a big welcome, big thanks to the team, and we are back. Thank you for these inspired presentations from the teams. I think you might agree that all the projects have been quite interesting, quite innovative each of them responding to a specific challenge that we as the country, as a nation, have to overcome on our way towards your integration. And this work with the project has been truly inspirational for the six months. I can tell you I've understood how uh, wonderful the teams are, and I'm very glad for them. We can be really be proud of them because every team member has become a true professional who has joined to the development of these IT decisions. You know, I have no envy to jury members because they will have quite a tough work today deciding who, uh, uh, which of the team will win uh, this or that nomination. May I invite the jury to their virtual deliberation room. And in the meantime, I suggest that uh, you can visit our virtual EU Association Lab exhibition at 3.30. You can find the link to it in the description of our YouTube channel. We have five links there. Uh, you can join the exhibition, you can put questions to team members, you can network, you can share their impressions. I think the guys will be glad. And we will reconvene here at, at 4 p.m.
Good afternoon, everyone, dear colleagues, dear participants, dear jury members, guests. Welcome to our final part of the demo day today. Our experts have uh, come to a decision and they're ready to announce it. We are glad to invite to this stage virtually our jury. The floor is yours. So I will play the role of jury. I'd like to announce uh, the first nomination and Anatoly Kutsevol will announce the winner. Uh, uh, perfect. Uh, dear teams, uh, first of all, let me thank you uh, for your great presentations, uh, for all uh, job we should do together with uh, uh, JZ colleagues and other participants. Uh, great efforts and uh, keep going. Uh, I would be really uh, uh, surprised that the issue of uh, environment is very important these days not only COVID restrictions, but the future um, threats to the uh, nations and also to worldwide uh, populations is also environmental issues. So I am delighted to announce um, Echo Friendship of the Year and nomination, uh, which goes to our uh, colleagues, civil society, uh, environmental impact assessments. My congratulations. Thank you. Vitaimo. Congrats, uh, team representatives, please come on scene. The next nomination will be announced by a jury member physically present here with us. Please welcome Viktor Hursky. I have an exquisite possibility to be on screen and to be physically present here. So in all formats, offline and online, I was called upon to announce the winner in the next nomination and this is exactly the team that I feel uh, some special relationship to. First of all, because we our paths uh, have crossed in the scope of our collaboration in Mariupol. Secondly, because as the practice shows, uh, in terms of our five year long collaboration within the 1991 Open Data Incubator, uh, this is the team that has been showing steady results, feasible, palpable, that uh, already today. So the team of the project, the money follows the service. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Maria Golub to announce the winner in third nomination. Well, of course, thanks to the participants and to my uh, jury members, uh, thanks to, to all for having me here. I was really excited and, and thrilled to participate in today's demo day. You know, um, there are a lot of challenges we all are facing today, and I'm deeply convinced that the reply to this challenge should be even uh, more, not less, integration of the Ukraine into the European Union in all senses of, 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 of this. And of course, I was very much excited to uh, see this environmental friendly focus of this year uh, demo day. So I'm very much pleased to announce the next nomination and 
this is the impact makers of the year and the nomination goes to the fly green team my absolute champions for today's demo day thanks guys you did great прошу на сцену представників команди fly green Please welcome the Fly Green team on stage. The fourth nomination will be announced by Bernadette Noy. Hello everybody and uh, thanks a lot from my side for these really interesting pitches and all the topics were really innovative, very interesting and I have the pleasure to announce the nomination for the headway of the year which is going to our team uh, working on online certification. So traffic is a really big issue I think all over the world and even if we wish we could change this we have always more cars more drivers more lorries and for that we have also more yeah traffic problems starting with traffic jams we know them all from kiev at least we have a lot of accidents and we have still all over the world a great number of not really well driving people and you give really an input to change this in order to make make it possible to have an online certification of improving infrastructure but also to improve transport as it's uh, in its in its whole aspects so i'm very proud that i can congratulate you today and uh well done and go ahead it's really a wonderful idea thank you very much thank you uh, mrs Noy, and please welcome the online certification team on stage And one last prize to find its owners. And I'd like to invite to the mic a person with whom we've been implementing this program for three years with ongoing enjoyable support from the Government Office for European and Euro-Atlantic Integration. Please, Oleksiy Guzko. Dear colleagues, it's a pleasure seeing everyone today. I'd like to thank every participant today for their participation in this wonderful project. I think uh, without doubt everyone has been uh, seen my particular affection to the team working in the area of vocational education and training. In my view, this is uh, a very important topic, which is not only well in line with the EU Ukraine Association Agreement, but it is also very important in terms of the current situation, also in terms of pandemics. And it's a pleasure for me to uh, to to Nom uh, to invite the nominees uh, to the prize drivers of vocational education and training. Please welcome Marina Shumik on stage. Our heartful thanks to the jury members, to our winners. The round was quite complex, yet you were able to show some tangible, impressive results. I do wish every team to be able to use the acquired skill, knowledge and new ideas in their everyday work and go confidently into the future, creating new useful services for the citizens of Ukraine. And I'd like now to invite uh, country, JZ country director in Ukraine, Mrs. Bernadette Noy, to deliver the final words for today's event. Thank you, Tatiana. Um, thank you to all the participants and thanks uh, a lot to the great organization. It's always quite an experiment 
nowadays when we have to deal with translation and with MS Teams and putting together all these tools, it's a lot of work and thank you really to the team and also to the participants. It was really a great experience. I'm happy to have the honor to speak the last words to you and to wind up uh, the event. I'm sorry that I can't do this in Ukrainian, but it's not a language I'm speaking, unfortunately. <laughs> So, dear colleagues and partners, dear participants in the lab, it is a great honor to me to have today the final words, as I said, and uh, to close our three years incubation program, EU Association Lab. I would like to underline that three years ago, uh, we have started with our partners the first incubation program for public services in Ukraine. And I must reveal to you that our government in Germany has been introducing only this year the first federal incubation program at the German Ministry for Interior uh, Building and Company. Like Mrs. Ambassador Feldhusen, I am underlining that all of you are pioneers uh, within the public sector, running and working actively in this program during the pandemic caused big challenges to you and all of us. I'm very impressed how excellently you managed this and with how many, with the great spirit and with great dedication. Three years ago, we have expected much of the lab and today at the third demo day of the EU Association Lab, we are convinced that this lab is delivering tangible results for European integration to Ukraine and the development of innovative culture in public service. Therefore, it is right time to announce that during the next three years, the Ukrainian and German government will follow on this path. This is, I'm really happy to, that I can announce this. Together with our appreciated partners in the government office for the coordination of European and Euro-Atlantic integration, this is a really difficult to pronounce. We will work with a flexible fund on further EU integration for Ukraine. And this might be news for you. We will start to cooperate as well with the Ministry of Digital Transformation. More closely to elaborate our experiences with the incubation, pro with the incubation program for public services and products. Finally, I would like to congratulate all five teams present today, as well as all other 11 teams of the past EU lab rounds for developing very interesting and inspiring solutions. You were so brave to take part in the first Ukrainian incubation program for, uh, for civil servants. Really, my, my respect and I'm from my side. I express our gratitude to the government office for sorry, the coordination of European and Euro-Atlantic integration. At first, Anatoly Kutsebol, Oleski Genchev, and Oleski Kusko for their constant backing and constructive cooperation. And I would like to thank 1991 Open Data Incubator, explicitly Jane and uh, Oksana and Victor for the support uh, experiences. I would like to acknowledge the creativity and the inspiration by all mentors and trainers for our teams. Also, the constant backing of the EU delegation in Kiev, thanks a lot, uh, is, that is and will be very much appreciated. Maria, thanks for that specifically. And at last but not least, I would like to express my thanks to the whole team of the advisory funds uh, within GIZ, uh, especially Tatiana, Tanya, Anna, Olga, Galina, Daria, Natalia, Nadia, Olena, Tanya, Natalia, Margarita, and Karina. I hope I didn't miss anybody. <laughs> now enjoy your award and fruits of the successful work. Thanks a lot. Was a pleasure. Uh, you know, it's a bit sad to announce our program uh, has ended and has to adjourn. But I'd like, nevertheless, to join these heartfelt thanks and thank uh, everyone involved and engaged. 
particularly every team member who might be doing a lot though backstage without being visible for this period of nearly three years. And while we are ending this program, yet uh, I can assure you that the work on Ukraine's Euro integration will continue. I'd like to thank everyone. Thank you for this day with us. Thank you to jury members, to our teams, to everyone present, to everyone who has contributed to the establishment of such an innovative program as the EU Association Lab with hopes that we will meet next year and we will make a nice uh, team of professionals able to cope with many more.